Can I tell you something? If you really want to be successful, you got to have a lot of dog in you. Because life ain't fair. But life ain't fair to nobody. You just got to fight through, man. You got to bite back sometimes. You're going to go through certain things. You can't have triumph without conflict. You can't be a winner if you're not in a fight. This is a fight. You got to be ready to fight. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. Here's a good phrase to note. Negative is normal. It's not successful, but it's normal. It's part of life. And here's the next key. You must learn to handle the negative. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to dwell on it, but you do have to handle it, my opinion. Here's what part of it is. It's called the great war between good and evil. And there is a war on. The minute you were born, you got involved in the war between good and evil, between darkness and light, between negative and positive, between weeds and human activity. I mean, the war is on. In the absence of light, guess what's automatic? Darkness. If good does not arouse itself, guess what moves in? Evil. It's a war. Now here's the good news about the war between good and evil. Evil is no match for good, but good must be active. Make sure you're not losing the war by taking off too much. Handle the upcoming winters. Don't wish away the winters. That's called naive. Wish for the strength. Wish for the wisdom. We all have things in life that come against us, situations that aren't fair, people that do us wrong. But just because you have opposition doesn't mean you're not in God's will. Anytime you're going to move forward, Anytime you're about to take new ground, there will be opposition, things you don't understand. The people that reach their destiny aren't moved by what's not working out. They know the setback is really a setup for God to do something greater. The opposition is a sign that promotion is coming. New levels are on the way. When God was going to promote David and give him the respect and influence of the whole nation, he didn't send David a friend. No, God sent David an enemy. He sent him a giant. No, David understood this principle. With the opportunity, there would be opposition. The giants you face weren't sent to defeat you, but to show people the anointing on your life. When you defeat that giant, when you beat the cancer, when your business takes off, there won't be any doubt people will see the favor of God on your life. They may have dismissed you in the past, not paid much attention. Oh, it's just David, a teenager. He doesn't have much to offer. Well, get ready. That giant may be bigger, stronger, more powerful, but it is no match for our God. The giant is not going to defeat you. It's going to establish you. It's going to cause people to see that you're favored. They may not like you, but they won't be able to deny the fact of the blessing that God put on your life. Don't complain about your giants. Without that giant, you couldn't take your throne, so to speak. You wouldn't see the fullness of your destiny. And none of us, of course, like difficulties, but keep the right perspective. On the other side is a new level. You have to have a made-up mind. You are in it to win it. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. He sees who's not treating you right. If you'll stay in faith, you'll not only come out, you'll come out better, promoted to a new level of your destiny. Don't be surprised when God blesses you if everyone doesn't celebrate you. They're fine as long as you stay at their level. They'll be for you. But when God takes you to the next level, they may not be happy for you. Instead of getting discouraged, remember that opposition is a sign that promotion is coming. When you do the right thing, when the wrong thing is happening, you're sowing a seed for God to bless you. It may...
look like somebody's getting the best of you. It was unfair. Don't worry, your time is coming. They think they're pushing you down. Really, they're pushing you up. People's opinion of you is none of your business. I have lots of haters, but who are they though? They don't even know me. So I don't, I don't give them no energy. I just keep going through. And, but then I'll tell you something too. If you don't have any haters, you need to get some. Because if you have no haters, you ain't doing nothing, man. Well, Joel, it's not right. They did me wrong. Why don't you let God fight your battles? Why don't you let God be your vindicator? God will vindicate you better than you can vindicate yourself. They may be wrong, but you have to ask yourself, if you win the argument, what is it going to accomplish? You could win, but in the big picture, it took your time, your energy, your focus, things you should be using for your own dreams. If that battle is not between you and your God-given destiny, it's a distraction. You have to learn to let things go. Let somebody else be right for the sake of peace. We would go a lot further. We would enjoy life a lot more if we would simply ignore things. Somebody did you wrong, let God fight your battles. Ignore it and keep moving forward. I've been speaking in public now about 17 years since my father died. And the more people you're in front of, the more critics you have. But I've found a critic has never been able to stop me. I didn't try to prove to them who I am, answer my critics, convince them to like me. I found something more effective. Ignore it. Be an eagle and rise above it. fly at heights that a crow cannot reach. One of your relatives may be a crow. Your spouse may be, I'm just kidding. The only way to argue with the crow is to sink down to their level. You need to go back up where you belong. You're an eagle. Quit wasting time with that crow. The crows cannot go where you're going. God sees what's happening. He'll take care of your crows. The scripture says, God opposes the people that oppose you. But if you go in and try to do God's work, let me straighten them out. I got a good insult for them. God will step back and say, okay, you do it on your own. But if you'll make a better decision and turn it over to God, and when the most high God, the creator of the universe opposes, nothing can stand against him. But when you're an eagle, some people will mistake that for weakness. The truth is, it's a sign of strength. It takes maturity 
to not get in an argument. Some people will try to bait you. On purpose, they'll do things to try to get you riled up. If you give in, you're allowing them to control you. Do yourself a favor. Quit taking the bait. The next time that happens, just smile and keep moving forward. You don't have time to waste playing those games. Your time is too valuable to waste it with people that don't want to have peace. Don't argue doctrine with people. Don't argue politics. For the sake of peace, let somebody else be right. Proverbs 20 says, avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. Only a fool insists on arguing. Being an eagle, overlooking some things for the sake of peace, that's a mark of honor. It's easy to argue over petty things, things that really don't matter. I've seen people get a divorce, not over something big, but they argued over small things. Where there's strife and division, little things turn into big things. When you live with someone, you're not going to see eye to eye all the time. You have to make this decision. I'm not going to allow strife in. I'm going to do what I can to keep the peace. What normally would upset you, the next time that happens, why don't you be an eagle and rise above it? And sometimes, even when you think you're right, you need to swallow your pride and let somebody else be right. I would rather let the other person be right and have peace than for me to be right and not have peace.